What's going on YouTube? My name is Dev Gambit. Welcome back to another video. It has been almost two years since I've done my last Discord video, and surprisingly, it did pretty well. And it looks like it helped out a lot of people. There were some things that uh, that I couldn't answer, but also a lot of things that I could answer that I didn't address in the last video. But let's just get right into it. I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown how to make your microphone sound better, whether it be a USB microphone, an XLR microphone, or even a USB headset microphone. It just depends. And uh, you're going to have to play around with it. I'm going to explain what everything does so you can get a good idea of it. So first things first, we're going to go into the video and voice settings inside of Discord. Uh, on the bottom left of Discord, you see the cog bar. You can see the uh, cog wheel, and that'll bring up the settings, and you just go to voice and video right here. You'll be brought up with this. Uh, if you don't know what input device is or output device, input is essentially your microphone, output is your headphones or, you know, whatever. So you're going to want to set that accordingly. For me, it is a SSL interface. Uh, you might have USB or maybe if you're using Arctic head headset or something like that, it'll just be that. It'll, you know, it'll say it. And for the most part, you can just test it that way. The next one is input volume. For the most part, I keep this at 100% unless you're finding that you're too loud, although this is normally not the case, so just keep it at 100% by default. My output, I tend to keep higher because I have my, uh, you know what, just adjust it however you want. By default, it's 100. If you need it louder, turn it up if you need to, or if you find streams are too quiet, that might be another reason as well. So, input mode. You have voice activity, which means um, as you're talking, it will, you know, do its best to pick it up. So that's what this bar is for. So anything under this bar will not be picked up. So if I turn this up, people in Discord cannot even hear me at full volume. If you want to turn this threshold down, I keep it around 60. That's normally a good spot to when you're talking. It's actually over that. Um, so you can do this or you can even just do it automatically like that. So when I speak, it, it goes green. And when I don't speak, it goes gray. It doesn't pick me up. So it's up to you. It's a personal preference. You can set it or you can... Um, Keep it however you want. Just mess around with it. Push to talk is when you hold a key down to, you know, let the microphone through. And uh, this is just all personal preference. So it just depends. Video settings. We're not really going over that. Don't even question what I have here. Uh, okay. So now we're under the advanced settings. So I'm going to go over what some of this stuff does. So it could be self-explanatory, but if you don't know what noise suppression is, it by default is already on um, when you download Discord. Noise suppression is what it's going to do is it's best Noise suppression is going to try to, how do you say, say you have a dog, well, maybe not a dog bark, but say you have family members kind of in the background or in another room and they're a bit loud and you don't want that to come through the microphone, you can set up the crisp noise suppression. So you just do this and it turns it on. What this will do is actually try to cut out that background noise. So it's going to try to sense the volumes and stuff and it's going to essentially choose the loudest point and then the lowest point and it's going to cut out the background noise. That's essentially what it's trying to do. And it does an all right job so if you really find that there are people just too loud in your background then it might be best you keep that on moving on to the next one this is this is video rec uh, related this is actually the codec that the discord uses so i mean not really you can do anything with that because that's discords but if we just skip video codec we're not going over video right now we're going over voice so if we go into voice processing there is actually noise reduction I don't even know why I have that on, to be honest with you. It probably turns on when you do restart Discord or whatnot. You might have to always go through it. Just double check. Sometimes it's different for everyone. So voice processing. You have echo cancellation, and which I'm going to be 100% honest with you. That's for like literally if you're sitting in a cathedral and you're screaming and it's just literally echoing, you might want to use that. But other than that, it ruins quality and it just cuts you out. Don't even bother touching that. Noise reduction is kind of the same as the noise cancellation or suppression at the top. Um, it's It also tries to get rid of any background noise. So if you find that your PC fan is too loud while you're talking, that might be bothersome to some people. Unless it's like really noticeable, you might want to turn on noise reduction. Uh, that'll help with that buzzing sound or any, any, any consistent sound that you have. That's the difference between the two. Automatic gain control. I will sometimes use this. Actually, and most of the time I do use this because people tell me I'm a little too quiet on Discord, which is normal. Um, it's not something you can really do if you're on an interface or uh, I'll go over it. But if you're too quiet and you've, you've got everything set up properly as far as your microphone goes, then you might just have to turn on automatic gain control and that'll bring up your levels. Um, it's called digital gain and it just essentially makes you loud enough or ideally loud enough for other people. So this is personal preference uh, or you find that you're too quiet. This stuff under here, the quality of service, do not really mess with that. Attenuation, I... This is kind of like an interesting thing. Um, 
Although I don't think people would use this. It essentially like lowers volumes of other applications, or in this case, it looks like it lowers the volume of the applications by this percent when someone is speaking. So it could be useful uh, if you want to maybe... Well, actually, I don't know. It depends what the if you're playing a game or something. You might want uh, people to be lowered or the game to be louder. This is when you would use this. I don't touch this because I don't need it. Uh, see, this is also, yeah, when I speak and when others speak, you can adjust the way you want. That's up to you. Audio subsystem, by default, this is on standard, um, which is fine for all USB things. If you are finding that you cannot really, if, something's, if you feel something's wrong with the Discord when you have an interface, for example, when you use XLR, like I use XLR, my interfaces, for whatever reason, all the ones that I used do not work on normal, like the, the standard um, subsystem. So you got to switch it to legacy and that is when it'll work. I believe it has to do with the bit rates and whatnot. I honestly could not tell you, but this is what it seems to be for, uh, th it seems to be the case for most people using uh, Windows and an interface. I, I don't know the science behind it, but this works for me and you're just going to have to test it out, but it'll most likely work for you if you use an interface. So screen share and this stuff, we don't really mess with this. Um, you could turn this off that this just tells you if it's not registering anything. So it could be useful. All right. Moving off of discord, there might be a few Windows settings you might want to change. If you're on windows, if you're on a Mac, you probably have a sound system setting as well. Your output might not or input and output might not be set up correctly. You'll have to maybe find another video because I don't have a Mac to show you right now or not. I don't have any screen recording software for it. So first thing to do is what I like to do is sound. I t always type in sound. Don't do like audio or anything like that. If so, you go to change sound, uh, change system sounds. You want to go to change system sounds. All right. So when you open up a sound settings, you're going to be brought to this window right here. I know it might be a little small. I'm going to try to zoom in for you guys so you guys can see it. Recording is going to be your microphone. So you're going to want to choose your microphone. Make sure to right click it and set as default device. Most likely in your case, if you only have one microphone or you're just planning on using it for everything. Playback is going to be your headphones. Um, it should, might even show you like speakers and stuff or in, if you're using a computer or like, for example, I used to have steel series. These are the steel series ones and you would actually uh, just select this and either, well, it's not enabled, but you'd set as default device and the other one as communication device. Um, the manual should have that for the headset. But for example, if you're using headphones directly plugged into a computer, most likely it'll say something like high definition audio device or something maybe related to your computer. So you're just gonna have to do a little bit of searching, but make sure you have these things set. As far as the microphone goes, the microphone does have its own properties in recording. You're going to want to go to properties, go to listen. Uh, all this stuff right here is just so you can hear yourself back. Uh, would not recommend that at all because it's really annoying and almost in the way. Levels. This is interesting because USB microphones actually use these level things as gain sometimes, which uh, if you raise gain too much, trust me, not, not going to be good. It'll, it'll sound like an Xbox Connect mic and you don't want that. For interface micro, I mean, for interfaces and microphones that use interfaces, it's actually different because what happens is the interface is providing the gain and you'll have a set gain and this adjusts the level. So if I do this, it'll start dropping off completely if I start wiggling this around, but it keeps the levels about the same. So if you're on an interface, keep this at 100, most likely. All right. Enhancements. I really would. This is something you'd have to play with. I don't ever touch any of the Windows built in stuff. Um, because it is just not good in my opinion. As far as advanced goes, most likely keep it on uh, 44,100 hertz or 48,000 hertz. Your microphone might even be able to reach higher than this number that I have here, and I'm pretty sure my microphone can as well. Although, trust me, nothing works really above 48,000 hertz. Trust me, because it's it's already good quality. Anything that's going to be up here is going to be used in studios, um, and it and most likely your computer can even run this audio and no applications really use it. You try it, you could do it. Discord will not work. So just don't even bother with that. This is essentially all you need to know for Discord settings. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave some comments down below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And the last one, there was quite a few questions and I answered most of them. I would like to think uh, there were some questions that I couldn't answer, but you know, it is what it is. And then on top of that, some people also were able to help. So that also helps out. So if you guys enjoyed this video or you found it useful, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.